All right, hello guys. So right now I'm just going to try to uh, teach you guys how to do a little bit of recursive functions, and we're just going to use the example of the Fibonacci sequence. But you're you're going to be able to use this method for whatever you want. Um, now recursive function is a function that calls itself back, and the Fibonacci sequence is uh, defined by this function right here that we see. And when does it? And see, usually it has sort of like a terminating case, like an end case, where it will give you a solid, nice, usable value. It gives you one, um, and actually gives you two times. And on the right, we have uh, what's called like a case. So it's f of x. So like it would be like f of 5 or f of 2. Um, this says that if that x, like whatever we put inside of this function, is equal to 1, so if x equals 1, then f of 1 equals this. And if x equals 2, f of x equals this. But for any other number, if x is more than 2, meaning any other number, basically, um, it's going give to give us this. Now, you're going to say, what the heck is this? Um, it called the function again. And except, you see, it called it a little differently. Um, so if you called f of 5, this would equal this would go, we'd look through this and we'd say, okay, f of 5. Um, actually, the example I like to use is f of 6. So we start off with f of 6 and we say, okay, f of 6. So x equals 6. So does x equal 1? No. x equals 2? No. So we got to go to this one. So what would this split up to? This would be f of 5 because it's x minus 1. So it's 6 minus 1. f of 5? plus f of 4. We don't even know what those values are, so it keeps getting split up and split up, and each time it gets a little less until we end up with x equals 1, x equals 2, and then we can solve it. So I'm just going to show you guys how that's actually done. Um, so, again, it's this is not x equals 1 and it's not x equals 2, so x is more than 2, so we use this. So f of 6 actually equals f of 5, which is x minus 1, plus f of 4, which is x minus 2. However, however, we don't even know what f of 5 equals. So we have to go so we have to go one step down and it goes into being f of 5 equals and uh, I'll do a little arrow because arrows help. So f of 5, and then f of 5, uh, it's still not 1 or 2. So f of 5 is the same thing. It goes f of 4 plus f of 3. But we still don't know those values. So it still keeps getting complicated, and it goes f of 4 equals, now keep in mind, I'm doing f of 4 equals, um, and I'm not getting f of 3 equals. In reality, if this wasn't the Fibonacci sequence, I would split these both up. I would go f of 4 equals there, and then on the right side, I would do f of 3 equals there. But this is this Fibonacci sequence, and I know that eventually I can see a sequence, I can see a pattern where I'm eventually going to find out f of 3 anyway. But so f of 4 equals f of 3 plus f of 2. And now look at this, guys f of 2. We know what f of 2 equals. We still don't know what f of 3 equals. So now we can tell we're getting close. We're getting close to the end. So we go down and we do f of 3 equals <clears throat> f of 2 plus f of 1. Now we know what that equals because f of 3 equals, we know the value for f of 2, f of 2 is 1. And f of 1 is 1. So you might think that these uh, 
these might be easy. And you might say, oh, we're done, right? No, we're not. Because f of, and uh, actually, I like what I like to do is on the right, I have a little uh, little list of the values of f of, uh, of the function that we do know. So we know that f of 1 equals 1, f of 2 equals 1. But now we just figured out f of 3 f of 3 is 1 plus 1, f of 3 equals 2. So now we have to go back up. We have to go back up, so now we know what f of 3 equals. So what does f of 4 equal? Well, f of 4 equals f of 3 plus f of 2, f of 3. We know that f of 3 equals um, 2, so it's 2 plus f of 2, which is 1, so equals 3. So now we know that f of 4 equals 3. And we're finally starting to make some progress. And again, we have to move back up. So say what f of 5 uh, equals. f of 5 equals f of 4, which is 3, plus f of 3, which is 2, which equals 5. So now we know that f of 5 equals 5. So we move up yet again because we need to know what f of 5 equals. Oh, whoops, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, actually, we're going to find out what f of 6 equals because f of 6 equals f of 5 plus f of 4. Remember, it's f of x minus 1 plus f of x minus 2. Well, for f of 6, that's what it looks like. So f, so we know the values now. f of 5 equals 5, so it's 5 plus f of 4 equals 3, which equals 8. And that, my friends, is our final answer. And um, in case you are curious, the Fibonacci sequence goes like 1, 1, 2, 3, um, 5, 8, 13... I don't want to keep doing it, um, but it keeps going on and on. And the Fibonacci sequence's function, what it really solves for is uh, when we solve for f of 6, we really want to know the sixth number in the sequence, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. And um, that's just been one example of, an, of a uh, function like this, a recursive function. But you're you're going to be able to see a lot more different ones out there and it's going to get a lot uh it's going to get very complicated so all i want to tell you guys before i end this video is to be really really careful that you write everything out very clearly um i always suggest making a list on the right anytime you figure out the value of a function put a, make a list on the right that's separate and nice and clean so you can use this um and that's pretty much it. You, the only way you'll get messed up on these is if you um, let yourself get confused and you make everything look confused by you know not being neat in your work. Um, but other than that, um, this has been a good video. I'll see you guys later.